Hey there, Python crew, and welcome back to Code with Josh. For obvious reasons, I'm Josh. I take complex tech jargon and break it down to simpler terms that you guys are able to understand. If you're new here and ready to learn at your pace, smash that subscribe button and get ready because we're about to dive into object-oriented programming with Python. And before I get in, if you guys are looking for my free handcrafted Python guidebook that I've made for you, it's the first link in the description. Swing by and grab yourself a copy that's going to help you through this episode. Object-oriented programming is the perfect way to spend your evenings staring at a screen, scratching your head. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. But it is a very powerful tool in programming, and Python is one of the languages that focuses on object-oriented programming. Now, if you're a beginner, or even if you're experienced, this may have you scratching your head wondering, what is this? How do I understand this? Well, that is what today's episode is all about. Now, let's Let's talk about, firstly, what is OOP, or Object-Oriented Program? It's essentially a way of programming where we create these objects, and each object has its own unique properties and attributes, as well as its own unique actions or functions. So think of you as an object, and you may have a brother or a sister. You come from the same parents, but you are each unique and special in your own way. Well, that's kind of like an object. Now, a class is what we use to construct or create these objects. And a class is just like a blueprint. It's a blueprint that stores all this relevant information that can be tapped into and used along the way. Think of a class as like a cake recipe. It tells you what you need, like your ingredients, and how to mix them to create your cake or bake your cake. All right, let's jump in and take a look at what this looks like visually. So as you can see here, I have three different objects on the screen. Now, each of these objects is a car, but they each have their own unique properties, what make them unique, right? All of these cars may have similar properties, so four wheels and two seats, but then they all have unique properties of their own. So this car is blue, it's a convertible, while this other car is yellow and it's a luxury car. At the end of the day, they are three different objects, but they all come from the same class, the same blueprint. That blueprint is car. Well, this is similar to how object-oriented programming works. Here, I have a few examples for you guys. Now, let's just take a look at computers. There are mainly three types of computers. We have MacBook, Windows, and Linux. Now, they are each a different operating system, but if I ask you, do you have a computer, it doesn't matter. You're going to say yes or no. It's just a different type of computer, right? The same applies for animals. Now let's imagine you want to create a class called car. We need to define that class. It's almost like defining a function, right? We use that keyword DEF or DEF. And we can do the same with class, but class is a little different. It has its own unique keywords. But first, let's talk about a very special function in a class called init. What is init? Well, init is a constructor function. I want you to think of the word constructor like construction. What does that word mean in English? Well, construction means use to build. We use this method in it, which is automatically ran to construct our class. In it technically means initialize, and in English, initialize means start. That's what we do with init. Every time we use our class, init is automatically ran, and it's used to construct, to build your object, your class. That's pretty cool. Now, let me show you guys a code example of what this may look like. What does a class look like? Well, let's find out. Here we go. I use the keyword class to define a class, kind of like a function. 
right? And then we give a class name. This is the only time in Python that we capitalize. You capitalize the name of a class when you're creating it and using it. Inside a class, we literally store functions. That's all that's happening in a class. A class is a place for you to store similar functions, or not similar functions, but functions which relate to an object. The first function in a class is init. Init is used to construct the rest of the class. Now, inside a class, we don't call them functions. A function in a class is called a method. A variable in a class is called a property. Method, function. Property, variable. Drill that into your head. Don't forget, because it's really useful. And I'm going to be using that going forward. Here you see an init. I created a property. Now, init is a place to store all the variables, the properties we will use in the class. Inside the init method, I'm giving parameters. These parameters will be used as the value to our property. You may be seeing this special word, self. Self is always the first word in a method as a parameter or before a property. And I want you to view self as like a key. It unlocks the variables, properties, and functions, methods, that you can use around your class. So self is a key. You only use it in your class, and you must use it in your class in order to unlock and use all the methods and properties you make. After you make init, then you can make any other methods which relate to your class or your object. Once you're done making your class on the outside, we create an object and the value of an object is a class. If init has parameters, then you must give arguments to your class when you create your object. Long story short, an object is a variable that's value is a class. That's it. Okay, if we break things down into the simplest terms, that's all it is. Okay, my final example before I show you guys some real live coding. Here's an example of class. Just pause the video if you need to. Take a look at what's happening, right? I have a class called agent. And then inside there, we create our init, our constructor. What variables will I use along the way? Well, I need a name, health, and a type of car for my agent. For each parameter, I create a property. The value of the property is the parameter. So self.name equals name. And then whatever I give my object, so like spy, the value is our agent class. James Bond is the name that goes to name. So anytime you use self.name, that is linked to the object, so James Bond, right? These arguments, one, two, three, match one, two, three parameters. In order to use a function in a class, it's not a function, it's a method. To use this method, a method and property must be linked to an object to work. So take a look at what I mean. At the bottom here, I have my method, player info, which is a method in my class. It must be linked to my object in order to work. Right? So spy.playerInfo, that's going to give me this stuff right here. Welcome James Bond, your health 100, car choice, Jaguar. If I take that one step further, just for you guys visually, take a look at, at what's happening. I'm not going to touch on this very much, so pause the video, read through what I've created for you guys. All right, great. You have an understanding of OOP, or Object Oriented Programming. Very quickly, I want to take you guys over into your local code editor. Mine is VS Code. Let's create a class and see how we can interact with our class. Over to VS Code. Keep it simple, don't overcomplicate it. I'm going to define a class called car. 
you can see that I'm using the class keyword and then I'm naming my class car, capital C. The first thing I want to do here is I'm going to create a method called init. Now init is a very special Python method. It has two underscores in the beginning and at the end. Technically this is called a dunder method, which in a later episode I can talk about these. Now, init is where we create all the variables that we are going to be using. But the first parameter must be self. That acts as a key. So think of it as I am referring to myself. Anytime I have an object and I'm referring to that object or myself, that's why we use that keyword self. Inside here, let's say make, model, and year. For each of those, let's make a property. Okay, I'll build out two methods. I'm going to create a method called uh, drive, if that makes sense, and give it self in order to use that method. And inside here, all I'm going to do is I am going to make an f string, and let's say uh, my car is a self dot make that is from the year self dot year. Okay, that's all that this one's gonna do. Then let's create one more method. And let's say, I don't know, year checker. I'm gonna say self, and then I am going to actually give it another year. So let's say new year. And I could do anything, just like a normal function here. So let's just say, okay, if the new year is greater than uh, self.year, then you could just print off something like newer car, right? Else, let's just print off older model. So I've built out a class car with two methods. And it is a method, but we don't use that outside the class. It's just used to construct things, right? So I really have two methods, drive and year checker. Now I'm gonna make two objects. Let's start with Tesla equals car, class. Inside here I need a make, model, and year. So I'm gonna say make Tesla. Model, uh, model X. Year, let's say an integer, 2022. The great thing about classes is you create one class and you can have multiple objects. That's the advantage to creating a class. It's like a blueprint. My next car, let's say Ferrari, and let's car class that. We can put our make as a Ferrari. Let's say the model is gonna be a 458. Italia, and then the year, that's slightly older, let's say 2019. All right, I've made my two objects. Let's take Tesla and let's just say drive. I'm calling it. Remember the method needs to be linked to an object. So it's only gonna work for Tesla. My car is a Tesla that is from the year 2022. Awesome. And you can see that if I pop down here and I take my other object, Ferrari drive, the same thing happens. Right there, my car is a Ferrari from the year 2019. That's pretty cool. We're using objects and object-oriented programming. Let's call our last method. I'm gonna jump down here and I'm just gonna do it for the Tesla. Uh, I'm gonna say Tesla.YearChecker. Now this is a method, but we defined a parameter new year. So inside there, let's just say 2023. I'm gonna run my code. You can see that I'm printing off new car because my condition was met. That's pretty much it, guys. I just introduced to you the concept of object-oriented programming, and I hope you found this a bit more fun and lively than those other Python videos that we all know, we all love, but they drive us nuts. Education should be fun, and that's the way and the reason why we all learn differently. Find something that works for you and stick with it because you can do it. In this episode, you were introduced to object-oriented programming, but there is so much more with objects that we can do. 
in a future episode, specifically probably the next episode, I'm gonna dive deeper into this concept for you guys. Hey, remember, if you're struggling along the way or you want more resources, I made a free handcrafted Python guidebook for my students that they get on the first day of class. It's the first link in the description. Swing by and grab your free copy that you can use to help you. If you like this video, smash that subscribe button, hit the like button. This helps me as a growing channel. I hope you guys found this helpful and I can't wait to see you guys in a future episode of Code with Josh. Until next time, I'll see you there. Peace.